Alright guys, Tactical here and today I wanted to talk about the game modes for Call of Duty Black Ops 4. The rule set was not announced in last week's 5v5 reveal. If you missed any of the other details, there's a link in the description below to the video I did on that. Now we know it's going to be 5v5, but the rule set that's going to be played is very much up in the air. I plan to do a video on specialists and more theoretical stuff like that, but today I want to talk about the game modes because it's been a bit of a hot topic as to what game modes could potentially work in a 5v5 setting. I've heard some people say that we need new game modes to spice up Call of Duty but my overall stance is kind of a if it ain't broke don't fix it situation where we already have enough change in Call of Duty every year with a new game it's probably the most changeable of really all esports so it would be nice to have at least the same game modes from year to year but I understand that the way Activision is going with this is a large part of their reasoning to going 5v5 is to combine the competitive and the casual scenes and there's definitely going to be some growing pains through Black Ops 4 into the future games as to what game modes can really work and can help attract casual interest. But now 5v5 is a thing, I'll talk about what's viable today. So our current game modes of course from this year, Hardpoint, Search and Destroy and Capture the Flag, will they work in Black Ops 4 and what alterations might need to be made for them to work and will there be new game modes coming into play such as this control game mode they added. So I'll talk about this as we go on. I don't have any set in stone opinions here, I'm just going to throw out some ideas and what I think the situation will be but I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below and get something of a discussion going. So like if you enjoy and subscribe if you're new. This was Treyarch's blog when they introduced the Black Ops 4 competitive season. We scroll down a little bit, this is quite an interesting paragraph. The audience for competitive play in the CWL will grow by bridging the gap between pubs and the pros and making the game that's watched on main stage as close as possible to the game that's played at home on the couch. So already we're seeing signs that the rule set that's going to be in play will try and keep as many things in public match allowed as possible like the specialists, similar to what we saw in Black Ops 3 and maybe they'll introduce some sort of ban and protect system to help with that. So for that reason Black Ops 4 is moving to a 5v5 format for the first time in Call of Duty World League history. This is a game that's built from the ground up as 5v5. Maps, spawns, weapons and specialists are all designed and fine-tuned for the optimal pace of play in teams of 5. This is an interesting sentence. And the core gameplay of public matches in objective-based modes will be played 5v5, so CWL as a spectator experience will be familiar to all players of the game. Now this is quite interesting to me because it seems to imply that they're trying to make the game modes played as familiar to the player on the couch as they say as possible and something like Hardpoint which in my opinion is the best competitive game mode we have for 4v4 it's the real unique selling point I think of Call of Duty and what separates us from other games barely any casual players play Hardpoint and don't really even know what it is so either there'll be more of a push towards the casual fans to get involved with Hardpoint or maybe they consider removing it entirely to get more in line with what the casuals play. I don't like that approach but that might be what we see. So let's talk about Hardpoint first of all. Will it work in a 5v5 setting? I think we're going to need a hell of a lot of alterations to make it as good as it has been in 4v4. Let's have a look at slums from Black Ops 2. So this was one of the most popular hardpoint maps in that game and we know that it's coming back for Black Ops 4. So Black Ops 4 is bringing back four maps at release from the previous Black Ops games. We've got Slums, Firing Range, Summit and Jungle I believe. But we can be 80% sure that the map will be a very similar layout to this. Three lanes maps, you've got Brickside, middle with the statue where the first hardpoint is. Then you've got Blue Side, this long street and the very big power position back at Fountain which is really what I want to talk about here. Now the maps in Black Ops 4 aren't a especially enormous compared to maps in other Call of Duty games. Maybe they're slightly bigger, but they still run on the traditional three-lane situation. So I think big alterations are going to have to be made if Hardpoint is going to stay in the rotation. Firstly, for those who don't know too much about Black Ops 2, this third and fourth Hardpoint were both anchored by the same point back at this fountain. You'd have one player sitting on this fountain holding all of the garage push, this street, and then the players near the Hardpoint could just focus forwards in towards Courtyard and over towards blue area you might even have one guy back here looking down range and this guy would be set up with double trophy systems around him people would be trying to nade him off in this position and sometimes he would sit there like clayster was especially good for this position parasite as well sit there for like 120 seconds locking down the spawns for three and four now in 4v4 there was the potential if the three players near the hard point were pushed up a little bit too far for a player to spawn in back laundry right here and come behind them people had a cool strategy where they would throw grenades into laundry in order to block those potential spawns but still be able to push up on the map to keep the enemy out of the hard point. 
These two spawn points were hard enough to break in a 4v4 setting. Imagine this in a 5v5 setting. We can assume that slums, because it's coming back to Black Ops 4, will also be played in the competitive rotation. It was such an excellent map in Black Ops 2. But if you have a fifth player on the map, it would be so difficult to break spawns. You could have two players on the fountain. Maybe you have one player here. You have one player head glitching here. You have three guys towards the hard point. Maybe you have one player back here. And it's almost impossible to attempt to get a spawn flip here. You'd have to kill this guy and as soon as he dies he would spawn over here and ready to take you down. It would take so long to set up a successful pinch to break onto this hard point because there's really not too many directions you can even attack from. My main worry is that most if not all hard points will become money hills. Hills like number three and number four here it's going to be so hard to break the spawns. With an extra player on the defensive team setup, they can almost certainly avoid the potential of spawn flips. In a 4v4 setting you might say oh well in order to go control this hard point will push up a little bit and maybe if they push up slightly too far you'll cause a spawn flip and you'll lose the spawns from behind you but with a fifth player it's very difficult to see that happening with a competent pro team you just set someone up to guarantee the spawns don't flip set up on a head glitch and it's going to be almost impossible to break the setup now i think this could work as long as the attacking team to the hard point is given enough time 60 seconds on a hard point may not be enough in this situation you may have to up it to like 75 to allow the offensive team a couple of attempts to break the hard point all you had to do to break hill number three in a 4v4 setting was push up into garage make sure you get this kill on the guy in the back then push here yourself and then you can pinch the players in the hard point whereas with an extra player on the defense it's going to take a lot longer to win the gunfights in stages as you push up on the map. So for these hills on a 60 second timer, the attacking team maybe got two attempts to break the hard point before they had to think about the rotation. Whereas in 5v5, because it's gonna take longer to set up a pinch around the hard point, and the attacking team has more gunfights to win because even if they win the first gunfight, the fifth player spawns at the back again, and now you've got a very difficult setup to break once again. Another thing that's gonna be very important is a respawn delay. 100% a respawn delay has to come into effect. We've never had a huge respawn delay before but in a 5v5 setting it's definitely necessary so in in a situation like this where you've got five players on the defense if you kill the first man on this fountain i don't think two seconds is enough i think three four maybe even five seconds i think might be necessary in order to make sure that the attacking team can get the map control to spawn this player out over here by the police car hard point is exciting when teams can push and break into the hard point you don't want it to be super defense heavy there needs to be a respawn delay to give some advantage to the attacking team to make up for the disadvantage they have in positioning breaking the hard point. Now secondly we have search and destroy. I don't think this requires as many changes. I think in a boots on the ground 5v5 setting you'll have to play significantly slower and feel out the enemy on the offense. You can't afford to risk a five man rush into the B site when they could have three players set up on head glitches and just decimate you. Just shoot the first guy that comes out back down and then play the retake and play a long pinch. So I think the offense will have to play a lot more reserved most times feel out the defense find out where enemies are hopefully it'll be nice and tactical but I think it does require an added timer for the rounds I don't think one minute 30 is quite enough in a 5v5 setting where there's more players to kill to get onto the site maybe one minute 45 one minute 50 maybe even up to two minutes would be reasonable I think the 45 second timer on the bomb is fine five seconds to plant 7.5 diffuse is still fine but I think maybe you have to increase the round timer a little bit now, capture the flag. This is a game mode I'm not sure I see its viability in a 5v5 setting. Remember Black Ops 3 when we played 4v4 and especially the European teams, they'd have one guy sitting all the way at the back of the map on a power position just waiting for the guys to come to try and get the flag. They'd have one effectively camper at the back of the map always on the defense and that made for a very boring style of play, very low scoring, not exciting to watch at all. In a 5v5 setting, that is going to happen on absolutely every map. You'd have one guy at the back, like Slum CTF was a good map as well. The flag locations were over here by the fountain and in this second hard point. Say you needed an overtime cap, the enemy team could turtle so hard if they were up a single flag. And it would be almost impossible to break their defences, especially in a 5v5 setting. You could absolutely lock down the map with head glitches. 
And I think CTF would be a very boring and methodical game mode that would be incredibly low scoring and once someone got a single cap they would just turtle up and shut down. People say turtling is a bad idea in capture the flag but in a 5v5 situation let's say you get mid map control you just set up on your head glitch and just sit there and there's no way they're breaking your defenses. By the time they break through mid map you've already spawned up in your back base and it would take maybe three waves of kills to even get through to the flag if the defense was playing an intelligent structure so. Maybe that's competitive, but it's not entertaining. So I think CTF might have to go, and I'm not sure yet what would replace it. People talk about uplink, but I'm going to talk about control. So control has been talked about a lot. This is Treyarch's new game mode for Black Ops 4. This is the map Seaside with the control objectives B down here and A over where the tank is inside this building. Effectively, the way the map works at the current time is if the attacking team captures both objectives, they win the round. And if either team eliminates all of their opposition, so both teams have 30 lives, I think. If you die, you lose a life. So you can respawn as many times as you can until you have no respawns remaining. So if one team eliminates all the other team's lives, they win. If the attacking team captures both objectives, they also win. If the defensive team defends both objectives, kind of like in Demolition, where if one objective is captured, the amount of time on the clock goes up, then the defense win. So control is definitely an interesting game mode. There are some problems with it, I think, and maybe tweaks could come into play. One of my main problems with it is is that it seems like a mix of hardpoint and search and destroy. You have lives to think about, you also have objectives to capture, and if the series happen to be hardpoint, search and destroy, control, hardpoint, search and destroy, the middle map in the series is effectively a combination of the other maps, and I like Capture the Flag and I liked Uplink as a bit of a change of pace, right? You have Hardpoint twice in a series, you have SD twice in a series, which I think is fantastic. I don't like having four game modes, because it means that if one team is to complete a reverse sweep, they don't have to beat the opposition on the two maps they beat them on. So what I mean by that is if you're going to do a reverse sweep, you lose the first hard point in the first search, you win the swing game mode, then you have to beat that team on a hard point and a search again. Whereas in Black Ops 3, we'd see teams winning hard point S and D, the other team would just be better at CTF and uplink, and then it would come down to a kind of fluky game 5 search and destroy. So I like the middle game mode to be a change of pace and to only have three game modes, and I'm not sure control really fits the bill on that front. Now there are some other problems with control. You look at Seaside right here, this B objective is way further pushed up on the map than the A objective. It's very obvious that they should attack the B objective first. The offensive team spawns probably even closer to the B objective than the defense does. So 100% of the time, a good coordinated competitive team could capture B, almost certainly. If you get one wave of kills on the B objective, your enemy team is spawning all the way out here, you're guaranteed the capture. And then it becomes like a 50-50 situation on A. If control is going to work as a mode, both capture points need to be along the same axis, so the attacking team can choose either one to target. If Seaside was played as a competitive control map, every single round the offensive team would capture B and it would come down to a 50-50 at A, which is never an exciting situation. Now there were some other points brought up by Hunter JJ on Reddit that talked about how control is a kill based game mode, which is definitely true. I'm not sure I like the idea so much that if you can get enough kills to win yourself the map. I think that the objective and capturing the objective should be the first and foremost possibility and the amount of lives available for each team needs to be tweaked very intelligently to ensure that the objective is prioritized over just kill whoring. You don't want a situation situation where the competitive teams are foregoing the objective in order to spawn trap the enemy and just get the kills because who needs the objective when we can just run your lives down. Maybe there needs to be respawn delays for the defensive team as well to allow the offense to get into the objective. So I'm not convinced control is going to work. Aix even said he wouldn't mind domination coming back into competitive play and I wouldn't put it past them. Domination is by far the most accessible public match respawn game mode that is played. TDM, S and D, domination are the top three modes. And Domination was of course played in Ghost, so who knows it might come back. My personal stance is I'd really like Hardpoint to stay and make it work. It's by far the best game mode I think we have. I don't really like the idea of Control because it seems like a merger of Hardpoint and S&D. And if you were going to bring Control in, 
maybe it would have to replace Hardpoint entirely. I also like having a third game mode that's something a little bit different and I'm not sure Control can provide, but we'll have to see how things work out when the rule set is officially announced, presumably soon after the game is released. So like if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below. Whether my suggested alterations to Hardpoint will make it playable or what game modes you'd like to see in a 5v5 setting. So I'll have some more videos on topics similar to this coming soon. Thank you guys so much for watching as always and I'll see you next time.